Welcome folks, it's Dr. Charles Parker here, and if you're looking for more information on specifics and how to use ADHD meds effectively, appropriately, and with fewer problems, you've come to the right place. It's an area of special interest of mine, and I want to make sure that I communicate with you as effectively as I can about several points, two in this brief video. One is talking to the patient. Does that make sense? Are people avoiding talking to the patient? Oh yeah. It's sort of like they don't even talk to adolescent patients. Oftentimes, you have to talk to an adult. But then if you have to talk to an adult, maybe adults don't have ADD because it's just going to be too complicated to talk about. But let's start all the way back with kids around six or seven. And let's really think about the absolutely essential, the necessity of speaking to children directly about how the medications are working and start with them as soon as they can do it. If they're six years old and they can do it, fine. Six or seven is usually the cutoff where they start really understanding what you're driving at. And we've, we'll make the effort. We'll make the effort when they're six years old. We're going to start with the child every first visit. And then we go in and we help uh, understand with the parents exactly what we're trying to do. So what are we looking for with the child? Well, we're looking for the communication process so they can assess the duration of effectiveness. We have another post on the, um, another video on the duration of effectiveness, so please take a look at that. I mean, duration of effectiveness is the way to dial the meds in. If that child, that person taking the medication does not have an ability to assess what the objective is, what you're trying to do the medication for, or what you're using it for, it's, it's almost pointless because then we're just talking to the parents and it doesn't make any sense at all. We just had an example just this last week of a, of a an adolescent young man, 17, 18 years old, I don't remember exactly what his age is, and uh, he was totally furious with seeing a psychiatrist. Absolutely didn't want to see anybody at all. Well, we peeled all the layers away. It's because nobody had talked to him since he was a kid, and he'd been taking the medication since he was doggone seven years old. So we had 10 years of treating an individual, 10 years without talking to that individual. Does that sound like something we should change? Uh, that's why I'm doing this video. This is absolutely abhorrent, and it's going on frequently. This isn't occasional. This is common practice. You know, and why are we doing that? Because we think kids can't tell us what to do, number one. But the main reason, the main reason that we really don't chase this information down from the kids is we don't have a specific assessment objective in the first place. If we don't have an, a, a specific assessment objective, like the duration of effectiveness, which I was talking about in previous, uh, a previous video, if we, don't have, if we don't use the duration of effectiveness, how can we expect anybody to tell us what's going on anyway? Then we have these um, you know, innocent answers, these, these uh, uh, really ineffective questions and, and innocent answers, like the question is, How's it working? Is it doing anything? And what do the parents say? What do you mean? And this goes on repeatedly. We see many, many, many second opinions far too often. And um, it, it just happens all the time. It doesn't matter which part of the country you're in. This is what's going on in the country. So we need to change that, folks. And we need to, you as a patient need to know so you can tell your practitioner what you expect medication to do and whether it's working effectively or not. I'm going to just close with this one thought. I've talked about the top of the window on another video. I've talked about the duration of effectiveness in a, in a video that's coming up in a moment. I'm going to talk about the sides of the window, but I just want to give you a couple hints on the bottom of the window. New medications take us into a different bottom of the window. What do I mean by the bottom of the window? The bottom of the window down here is when the medicine's not working. It isn't even up into the therapeutic window. It's below the therapeutic window. So it's not working effectively based on what you expect the duration of effectiveness to be. It's just not working. Now, if that's happening, then we need to increase the dosage. But if we don't ask, the, if we don't have the grid, we're not going to know. And furthermore, an important point here, and I'll just wrap this up, is we're no longer just treating school. If your physician, it doesn't matter who they are, psychiatrist, pediatrician, family practitioner, it does not matter who's treating the child. 
we need to completely enlarge our vision so that individuals are taken care of in the home circumstance. And this is why I'm such a proponent of Vyvanse. I've talked about it before. It's a 12-hour half-life medication. Uh, I'm also a proponent if you don't want to use Vyvanse or can't use Vyvanse and you're going to use Concerta, do that second medication to get the evening taken care of. Of course, compliance drops out. That's one of the problems with the shorter-acting extended release medications. So the bottom of the window is absolutely essential. It's harder to see with Vyvanse because what happens with Vyvanse, you don't have that big drop that you have with any of the other stimulant products. So finding out exactly where it is, and this takes some time educating people as to what you're looking for regarding the cognitive changes that actually take place as opposed to feeling differently as you did with the other medications. So with that, I'm going to wind up uh, and I will look forward to talking to you in the next video. It's going to be about the sides of the window, and I'll amplify more on this window thing there. But I wanted to make sure we start talking to the kids that we're seeing. And of course, we have to talk to the adults, but let's get the grid right in the first place. Thanks. Talk to you later.